Good morning, everyone. We are going to wait about one minute, but I want you to go ahead and get your supplies ready. I want you to go ahead and get your folder, any work that we have been using, some of our passages. And then we will get started. Today we have kind of a shorter lesson. We're gonna be pretty quick. All right, we have all of our stuff ready. And so I'm gonna go ahead and share my screen. All right, we have our passages here and our outline. Remember, this is that first one that we made where I said each of the highlighted areas is going to end up being one paragraph as we write it in totality. Remember, we learned when we are reading our passage, we are boxing and coding or labeling the parts. I know that when I look back at my outline, my roadmap or guide, that this information can be included in T1A. This is for T1B. I can use words from here. This is where I get my ideas and my thoughts. Remember, I'm forming three sentences for point A and three sentences for point B. So I wanna make sure I get all of this information from my passages. All right, what else did we learn? We learned about T sentences. Right, our topic one is about lungs. So we need to have three things for our T sentence, our transition word. We need to include our prompt. Remember our prompt is to write about the human body. And then the topic is lungs. So I made myself a checklist as I was going. I can highlight those words, make sure that they are included. We learned that we are going to write into, I'm going to come back to the I paragraph. Inside of one paragraph, so um, for T1, it was about the lungs. I have a topic sentence. I have three or four sentences about A, three or four sentences about B. We remind ourselves by color coding so that we can use it like as a little checklist. So the same way, and remember I put my checklist over here, this is where we were adding our evidence-based terminology. That's something else that we learned about. Let's look at that chart real quick. Our evidence-based terminology is ref um, referencing our source, citing where we got the information from. And we said a lot of state rubrics will tell you that you need to make sure that you're citing your source, that um, you're, you're making the connection between and among your ideas from paragraph to paragraph but that you're telling, because it's a text-based essay, you're telling that you got that information from the text, and this references where you got the information, according to the human lungs, paragraph two. Okay, now I'm gonna go back to the I paragraph, and we learned that we have three parts of the I paragraph as well. We have our hook, we have our three topics, and we have our closing sentence. So all of these parts, um, and we're going to keep adding. We're gonna, we have a few more parts of the essay that we're going to keep adding. But a few things that we want to do right now is to just stop and look at the total part of the essay. And that's what we're going to do today. We are going to move the next three weeks into lessons about quotes paraphrases and own thoughts. You can go ahead and write that in your notes. I forgot to have my markers or pens. Quotes, paraphrases, and own thoughts. When we are writing our middle paragraphs, and we can write that up here, 
our middle paragraphs, remember I said, need to have three sentences for point A and three sentences for point B for each of your middle paragraphs. Same thing if we have the rainforest essay out. We need to have three sentences for point A, three sentences to support point B, and um, then we're going to be able to have a complete middle paragraph. So this is the 3A, 3B. Okay, these are the quotes, paraphrases, and own thoughts. Those are what make up your middle paragraphs. Now, when we wrote it the past couple of weeks, we just used information from the text so that we could see how to form a middle paragraph. Today, what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we're going to use quotes, paraphrases, and own thoughts to make sure we have a complete middle paragraph. A lot of the states, most of the states that we are working with, that you, that you are in, living in, will say that when you are using sources to, to write your information, you have to make sure that you are referencing back to them with a quote or a summary, a paraphrase of that information. So when I'm reading this part about the human lungs, I can't just copy this. You all probably know the big word that um, that is called when you just copy down what the paragraph says. That's plagiarism, right? Now, in fourth and fifth grade, we don't have to, to have all these fancy citations. We just have to give um, evidence back to the text. So we're going to use the, that evidence-based terminology. According to the human brain, paragraph eight. Um, in the text, it says, I learned after reading the human lungs and then sharing that stuff. But quotes, paraphrases, and own thoughts will now make up your middle paragraph. So let's look at a basic essay. If you use top score as a program in your building, you may, and you are in fourth grade, you may have seen this already. This is our basic essay about alligators. And right here is our I paragraph. Then you can see, because of the indentations, my next three paragraphs are my middle paragraphs. This is my T1. Here is my T2. Here is my T3, and I can see my last paragraph, my C paragraph. I can take my highlighter in the same way that we had on this um, outline, on our outline. I can highlight each one of those paragraphs. I can highlight the I paragraph in green. I can put a box around it, and I can show that this is my I paragraph, I, ha I have identified it, I wrote all about it, I included, what do I need to include in, a, in an I paragraph? The hook, my three topics, and remember a summary or closing sentence, a way to get into my essay, right? So I have that, but I wanna focus on these middle paragraphs today. You guys can see that they are color coded. So we have a red sentence, some green sentences, a blue sentence, and this purple sentence. Now, each one of those is the same for the three middle paragraphs. The red sentence is my T sentence, my topic sentence. It has a transition word, the prompt, and the topic. Here's my transition word. My prompt in this essay is write an informative essay or an expository essay about alligators. And so when I am writing an expository essay about alligators, I need to make sure that I'm including that prompt word, that keyword alligators again and again. So here's my prompt. And then in this topic, in this middle paragraph, I am writing about the two different species. So here is my topic. My T1 is species. It's B E C I E S. I'm forgetting how to spell. The green sentences are your 3A, 
the blue sentences are your 3B. And then our final sentence, remember we learned last week, is our wrap-up sentence. Our wrap-up sentence is pretty close to our topic sentence, remember? But we don't have a transition word. We have our prompt and our topic. So I can see that I wrote alligators and I can see that I included the topic of that middle paragraph, species. That is what we have learned so far. I can identify it in this paragraph. I have my T sentence. My green is my 3A. My blue is my 3B. And then I have this purple sentence as my W. When you're writing your own essay, boys and girls, you should be able to go back and use a highlighter or at least your eyes to know I have a topic sentence, three or four sentences about A, three or four about B, and then my W sentence. But now I'm going to show you an even fancier way that we're going to learn our writing. And this one has even more colors. This is our advanced essay about alligators. And the, these are the next three lessons, okay? Everything you see right here in blue is a quote. So let me take my highlighter and I'm going to write Q over here in blue. Everything you see in blue is a quote. Then everything you see in green is a paraphrase. This is information that is from the article. I, I even have my evidence-based terminology. We'll point that out in just a second. In those um, paraphrases so that I can refer back to my source. I can, I'm citing my source so that everybody knows I got that information from what I was reading, not my own head. But then we have, let's see, that's in pink. We have pink. And you can see that pink is all the way throughout the essay. Some of the sentences are shorter, some of them are longer, but they are our own thoughts. Let me try to get this a little bit closer. Bear with me for a minute now. We'll also ooh, try to make it, there we go. How's that? And then you can see it a little bit better. Okay, so we have quotes, paraphrases, and own thoughts. Each of those make up our middle paragraph. And now we might have three sentences for A, or we might have four. So let's look right here. I can identify, let's use yellow, my topic sentence in this paragraph is right here. I have my transition word. I have a fancy transition here, first and foremost. Then I include my prompt word, which remember I said was alligators. And then my whole paragraph, this first paragraph, is about the species, the two different species. My point A is American. My point B is Chinese. And so as I'm going through here, I'm going to look for that information. I'm going to see that it switches at one point. I'll be able to identify what part is in point A, what part is in point B. So then we have a a sentence right here that is not highlighted. Do you see that? That is because sometimes you just have facts inside of your essay, sentences that transition. This is a, a transitive sentence. This is a really high level skill, making sure that you're switching from point A to point B using um, a fancier way to transition instead of just saying also or moving right into your uh, topic B. That shows that you are a great writer, that you're able to connect those ideas from point A to point B. So otherwise, you see that we have a big mix of our blue sentences, our green sentences, and our pink sentences. I also want to show you that right after our quotes, remember blue is our quotes, we have pink. And then sometimes I don't have one directly after my quote. I have a paraphrase after it, and then I have my own thought. And that's okay, 
Remember, when you're building an essay, you don't want everything to look exactly the same. A quote, a paraphrase, an own thought. A quote, a paraphrase, an own thought. Remember, you're trying to get advanced. You're here learning today because you want to be an advanced writer. You want to include those things that the state rubric says, and you want to be really, really good at them. So you're going to start learning how to write transitive sentences to connect all of those ideas together. You're going to refer back to the source. Let's look right here. Um, I don't know if you're going to be able to see it. Let's try it. Right here, I can highlight over this. You're not gonna be able to see that very well. Woo! That is my quote. That's my evidence-based terminology to show you that I am using a quote. Okay, then you can see my quotation marks here. But then you see in my green sentences, those are my paraphrases. You can see that I still give reference back to my te text not test, I have my evidence-based terminology. It says, in the first passage, I learned. Remember, that is citing the source. Where did I get that information from? In the first passage. Down here in this blue sentence, I have my quotation marks right here. But then just like we learned, um, was it last week or the week before? I think the week before. When we are writing evidence-based terminology, we can use it at the end of the sentence, can't we? So I said, says the author of the article, Alligators at Risk. And then see how I underlined that title? Remember, we are allowed to underline the title. Then right here, my green sentence. Remember, my green sentences are paraphrases. Right here, I said, based on what I read in the article, Alligators at Risk. That's telling where I got that paraphrased information from. That's citing the source of, of what I read. I read in the text, articles, or articles at risk. Hello, Alligators at Risk. So what we have learned a couple of weeks ago about evidence-based terminology and how we refer back to our, our text in our essay, that shows my reader that I didn't make up that information. But I want you to look at the orange, not the orange sentences, the pink sentences. I was closing the orange top on my highlighter wheel. These pink sentences right here, and they continue on. Those are your own thoughts. Boys and girls, these own thoughts are not random. They are very, very important. And they make the reader understand that you know exactly what you just read. You comprehended it. You understood the facts and information that you just read. So while the prompt gives us the, the idea and keywords and the type of essay we're going to write, we're writing an expository essay about alligators, that information inside of my outline that I'm going to include in these middle paragraphs, I have to understand. I can't just write things down and not make a connection back to my own life or what I know or have learned. And so every time you have a quote or a paraphrase, we're going to try and write our own thoughts about that quote or paraphrase. So right here where I started our chart, our middle paragraphs have 3A and 3B. Those are the sentences for 3A and 3B. We have quotes, paraphrases, and own thoughts. And you guys as a class, you might decide that you're going to make a different chart, but I'm just going to write here words in quotation or in ellipse in quotation marks but the paraphrase so actually let me do this i have evidence-based terminology and then my quotation my period close my quotation paraphrases have ebt and then just the information 
I don't have to have quotations. A quote is taken directly from the text. You are borrowing what that author said and putting it into your essay, but you have to put quotations around it because otherwise you're plagiarizing. You're saying, this is what I wrote, if you don't include quotation marks. We'll learn more about that next week, but quotation marks go around something that's taken directly from the text. Paraphrases are like a summary. You're summarizing what you read, but you didn't come up with that information on your own. You came up with that information because you read and understood the text. You're gonna give credit back to that author, back to that text, citing that source. Your own thoughts, however, you see how this is at the bottom? Your own thoughts are directly related back to the quotes and the paraphrases that you thought were most important and wanted to include as the most important sentences in your middle paragraphs. So you have three sentences for A and three for B. You picked a quote here and then a paraphrase. Now you're going to give your own thoughts about the things that you just wrote. So let me show you. I'm going to read this to you. Normally I try not to read everything online to you guys because you can read yourselves, but we're going to take a minute to focus on this. Our T sentence says, first and foremost, there are two different species of alligators in the world. The most well-known type of alligator is the American alligator, and that is because there are many that live right in Florida, Georgia, Alabama, and Louisiana. Now, blue means what? A quote. Here's my evidence-based terminology. According to the article, Alligators at Risk, and then see my quotation mark? This is directly from the text. The American alligator can be found in the wetlands of the Southern United States. There's my period and then my quotation mark closing the information that I found in this text. Now pink is what? My own thought. This is my own thoughts about this text. It is hard to believe that these animals were once close to extinction because I have seen so many around where I live. It is very common to see alligators. Boys and girls, I live in Florida and we see alligators all the time outside by ponds or in lakes. Sometimes we'll go jet skiing in the river and we're going back in little canals we'll see an alligator just on the side and then the, on the bank of the creek and I see them all the time. And so if, if I read that, that the American alligator can be found in the waters of, of the Southern United States, I am now going to make a connection. I'm going to give my own thought to the fact that they were um, once endangered and that I see them all the time. Now, I'm not gonna write something like, one time I went on a field trip to see alligators with my class. Does that have anything to do with them being found in the wetlands? No. Can I write something about the story I just told you? That I was riding jet skis and we saw alligators on the bank of the river. So I know because I live in the southern United States, I know I have witnessed, experienced that. Can I write something like that? Sure. I just need to make sure it's connected back to the text. Let's keep moving. The green, remember, is a paraphrase. This is information that I got from the text, but now I'm summarizing it. You can see I use my evidence-based terminology. In the first passage, I learned that the American alligator was listed under the Endangered Species Act. Look right here. I said that just above in my own thought sentence after this quote. Boys and girls, that's a very advanced technique. I'm using something I already know I'm going to write about in a minute to connect these ideas. And our rubrics tell us that we have to connect all of these ideas that we're putting in our essay. Okay, so I want you to pay attention to these things because when we go to write our essay, we have to think and think and think. This takes a lot of effort, but if you just follow the QPO, and I'm going to refer to it as QPO a lot because it's a way that my class and I used to code it. Let's keep reading. 
American alligator was listed under the Endangered Species Act, and it was illegal to hunt them. As a result of the act, the alligators have a high enough population to be taken off the endangered species list in 1987. Now, that is the end of my A. So there's my three A. I have, actually I have four, don't I? I have this sentence right here about the American alligator, and then I have a quote. I have my own thought, and then I also have a paraphrase. Then I go into point B. Now, I'm not going to read the rest of this. I want you, I'm gonna pull this back up just a little bit so we can see the whole essay. All right, I want you to notice a couple of things before we go. I want you to notice that there are some, and I already said this, shorter sentences and some really long sentences. This is a couple of sentences, a couple of things that were paraphrased from the text. Can you use four or five or six sentences and paraphrase them down to two? A hundred percent. If you look down here, this is a longer quote. This quote up here is shorter, right? This quote right here, shorter, but this is longer. You want to show the reader that you are not always using seven sentence or seven words per quote. No rubric says that. It shows that you have varied sentence structure. You have some sentences that are shorter, some that are longer. You have a way to connect those thoughts between and among paragraphs. Same thing with my green sentences. This one right here is really short, right? But the other ones, they're a little bit longer. Can you do that as well? Absolutely. And your pink, your own thoughts, again, some of them are going to be one sentence or, or, or kind of shorter. I can imagine alligators burrowing themselves down in the cool, wet sand. It's, it's a technique that we will learn about when we're on own thoughts. You're saying something about what you just quoted or paraphrased. And we want to make sure that we use a variety of those in our uh, complete paragraph. So let's go over real quick one minute what we learned. We learned that our middle paragraphs, oh, let's pull that down, have our three sentences for A and our three sentences for B, but that they are made up of quotes, paraphrases, and own thoughts. We learned that, let's find our basic essay. We learned that this is what we've done so far. We found information from our text to write for point A and point B, that each paragraph has to have a, a red and purple on this one, a T sentence and a W sentence. But now we are going to move into some advanced topics, our quotes, paraphrases, and own thoughts that make up our point A and point B, those, those subtopics of our middle paragraphs. Okay. Thank you guys so much for joining us. I look forward to seeing you on Thursday. Have a great day.